Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Wealth Architect Podcast. We're spicing it up with a little estrogen here today. I'm excited about it. You, you have no idea how much fun this lady is, is. Just in talking to her right before we got started, she's full of this beautiful, positive energy. She's a pre premier financial freedom mentor for women entrepreneurs and the go-to experts for some of the biggest names. She's got her own cryptocurrency, guys. This is so cool. We're going to talk about that. She's been with Mark Victor Hansen, I mean, on the stage, Mark Victor Hansen, T. Harbecker, Alex Mondozian, Laurel Langemeyer, Ali Brown, a lot of my favorite people in there. And through her signature programs like Financial Freedom 101, which resonates with me because I love to teach people about financial freedom and cash flow, she's helped thousands of entrepreneurs from all over the world to create more ease, peace, and freedom around money. Please, let's welcome Penelope Jane Smith. Welcome, Penelope. Thank you so much, Mark. I'm super excited to be here. I love the whole wealth architect concept and brand, and I am stoked for our conversation today. Well, good. You know, I have to, I have to make a, an admission. When I was little, I used to think Penelope was pronounced Penelope because cantaloupe is not Penelope, yes. right? Maybe so, it should be. you know, one way or the other, I like Penelope. It sounds prettier, but I just had to come out and say that right away. It means nothing for this podcast, but what the heck, we're having a little fun. So listen, tell me a little bit about your origins and what you do and how you help women and how you help people achieve financial freedom. Let's start there. Oh, my, my origin story. Well, I started off uh, in real estate, actually, in my mid-20s, and I took $10,000 of my own money, and in four years, I turned that into over $6 million in real estate. So I was on track to retire, although I prefer the term financial freedom, uh, by the time I was 31. Yeah. And then wow. when the real estate market crashed, that just like took me right out with it. And uh, not only did I lose my beautiful home to foreclosure, but uh, I was eventually forced to declare bankruptcy and couldn't even keep my lights on. And actually, out of some weird masochistic, like, I don't know what, I went to the foreclosure auction on my own home and they said, okay, you know, here's this one up in Benicia, borrowers, Penelope. And I'm like, you know, I'm losing my name. I'm losing my house. Like, say my name right, you know? <laughs> And that's when it just like all like really hit me like, oh my God, I'm, I'm losing my home. So um, it just made me think of that when you shared the Penelope. That's thing. funny. Like, hey, that happened at that, at the foreclosure <laughs> auction. It was just like, it was, it was brutal, right? So I'm really passionate about supporting other women entrepreneurs, especially, even though I work with people of all gender identities and lack thereof, um, to avoid some of the costly and painful mistakes I've made. Because if I knew then what I know now, I might have been able to keep my house. I definitely would have been able to keep my lights on. I just didn't have the right money tools and skills and systems in place. And I didn't understand that making money and keeping and growing money were two very different skill sets, right? Yeah. A so, lot of times we don't know what we don't know, right? And so exactly. had you had those tools, and that's why I believe so much like you do in financial education. It's why we're here on this podcast. It's why we're getting our message out to the world. People need to learn about this thing that they don't teach us in, in, in school, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I always say, if you listen to my podcast, you hear me say, I know more about the Pythagorean theorem than I know about investing my money. Well, not me, but you know, most people, because we just don't even emphasize it. We emphasize Romeo and Juliet and King Tut, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so it's great that you're doing that. All right. So you didn't buy your house at the auction, unfortunately. I well, thought maybe you were going to have a really cool story. Like I bought it back for half the mortgage or something, but that would be amazing. It doesn't work like that. They, you know, the bank has to not write it off and they, they get their mortgage money back and then they, then they sit on it, then they write it off. Right. But you know, the good news, Mark, and I used to fantasize about buying my house back. And then one of my friends was like, no, get something even better. Like you don't have to, you good. don't have to go backwards, go forwards. I'm like, wow, that's, that's a really good point. And so now you know, uh, I am in my dream home. It is way more awesome than the house that I lost. So I'm really happy for that distinction. Yeah. So, so many times when we get the cloud over our head, we tend to look at the rain, right? Instead of when the cloud passes over, it's going to be sunny sides again, skies again. And, you know, I always say spring always follows winter. So you got to, you got to live through that. And I was just, I was just on a podcast episode yesterday with a guest and we were talking about that period of time that you were, you know, you know, had a foreclosure and, you know, yeah. by the way, kudos to you for being transparent so that people can learn from that. Um, but, you know, that was the time that 
he got to learn a ton of things about himself and about business. And it sounds like you did the same thing. Am I right? Oh yeah. It's like the ultimate personal development seminar. I would never wish that experience on anyone. Yes. And another reason I'm passionate about it is if, if you have, if you're listening to this and you have faced financial challenges in your own life, then hopefully we can help you rebuild and recover and like rise like a Phoenix from the ashes. Right. Because I am, I've harvested so many lessons from that experience and I become a much better investor and a much better mentor really. Wow. So <clears throat> question for you then, what is financial freedom? How would you define it? And then what kind of tools and techniques and strategies can you give the audience? Yeah. Well, actually I get kind of frustrated because people are using the term financial freedom in like yeah. really weird ways. Like, you know, how to attract clients, you know, m make enough money that you're financially free. I'm like, that's not really financial freedom, but, but okay. I mean, the truth is there's a spectrum of financial sure. experience all the way from being in financial crisis to being debt free, to having money saved up, to having investments all the way up to like building wealth and estate planning and all of that. And so um, my goal is to like move people along that spectrum and experiencing more freedom and ease and peace all along the way. But yes. ultimately where I'm taking people, <laughs> ultimately what financial freedom means to me is where the passive income from your assets is more than enough to cover all your expenses and your lifestyle. So at that point, your money is working hard for you, making money for you, whether you are working, sleeping or playing, and you no longer have to depend on your business, a job, a partner, a spouse, an adult kid, or anyone else for money. Okay, great definition. You hit you hit on a couple words that I talk about all the time, and that's passive income. So yeah. let's talk about it. Is there really passive income? Oh my God, there's so many different ways to create passive income. And I'm sure that you've covered a lot of them. I mean, in the episodes that I've listened to, that's something that you talk about a lot. And it's passive income is awesome. But the truth is, you know, when we hear passive income, we're like, oh, I'm just like laying on the beach sipping my ties. The truth is there are varying degrees of passive, yeah, right? Yeah. Like yeah. for example, owning a rental property is not as passive as just like putting money in a certificate of deposit at a bank where you basically just like buy it and that's it. Sure. No, like even if you have a property manager, you still have to manage the manager, right? There's still this hassle factor that doesn't come with just like having money in the bank or even like a buy and hold stock market thing, which I know, I know you're not like a huge fan of, um, <laughs> but at least that's better than not investing, right? So okay. there's varying degrees of passive. And I think that that's something that you need to go into with open eyes and like having owned over 35 properties, uh, you know, ask me how I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. I, and I do too. And I have quote unquote real estate passive income. And I can tell you, I spend a lot of time dealing with it. Um, yeah, but it's, even still, though it's, it's still highly leveraged, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not passive, passive, right? I mean, there's very few things that I've seen that are perfectly passive. And, and let's not forget about all the things that you had to do to get to passive income. Like there's yeah. tons of stored labor and work that you did to make the money to be able to invest in passive income. And if you don't have the money, maybe it's you're exchanging your time. But yeah. The, all that goes into it. So that's not the passive part either. So I, I'm, I'm glad we're having the dialogue about what passive income is because sometimes it ain't so passive. No, but you know what? It's a hell of a lot better than just having to work at yes. Walmart when you're 80, right? So it's you, every, everything takes energy, but you may as well put your energy into something that's going to make your life easier and easier and easier over yes. time, yep. right? Beautiful. And you had asked me to like kind of to share the path. You know, I have a three-step system for how I support people to become financially free in five years or less, starting from wherever they are right now. And the first step is to just get clear on your financial freedom vision. What is the lifestyle that you're trying to create? And it might, you can do like basic, comfortable and luxurious, right? So it's like reachable. And then look at like, well, how much passive income do you actually need to support yourself with that lifestyle? And then like, once you know that number, it's so much easier to manifest from a place of clarity, right? And there's so much advice out there saying like, well, you need to pay off all your debt before you can invest, or you need, you know, $3 million to be able to retire in the United States today or any of these things. And when you understand that it's just a matter of having your passive income be more than your expenses, this is so cool because it doesn't need that you, it doesn't mean you need to make tons of money, right? You don't need to make six or seven figures to do that. You don't need to be a multimillionaire to do that. You don't even need to be debt free to do that. You just need more passive income than expenses. And so as you're putting your time and energy into something, you may as well put your time and energy into something that gives you that passive income and makes your life easier, right? 
So yeah. step one is to like get clear. Step two is to buy assets. And this is something that uh, you teach people how to do, right? Through your, through your awesome systems with stocks, which is like you take some of your money and you put it into something that's now going to grow or give you passive income. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to come as a regular dividend or check. Like even if something's growing in value and you sell off a percentage of it, that still counts, right? So you take or some borrow money, against it. Or borrow against it, exactly. So you take no some taxes. money, you put it into something that gives you that growth or income. This is like the golden goose model of investing, right? right. So you want to grow a big enough golden goose, have it laying enough golden eggs that you can do it, right? Then, and sometimes that's enough. Like some of my clients start working with me and they're financially free in a few months because all we need to do is basically like optimize their golden goose, right? And boom, yeah. there we go. And then um, if that's not enough to get you there in the time frame you want, then step three is to create assets. Mm -hmm. This is where you take your time, energy, creativity, social capital, intellectual property, you know, and you turn that into new passive or semi-passive income streams that fill in the gap between your magic number, you know, your financial freedom vision, and your golden goose then those new passive income streams can fill that in and boom, there you go. So that's kind of like the, uh, the, the journey or the overarching um, approach that I take. I love it. You see what I was talking about, everybody, about her energy? Like there's something about this woman. She's excited and exciting. So this is a lot of fun. So, well, so you know, it's freedom is one of my highest values. I you know, know. That's where I see the passion. I love it. I love it. I think so, about the movie Braveheart where it was freedom. And I'm just like, yes, you know, that's what I <laughs> want for everybody. Hey, it's Mark Yeager here to tell you about our cash flow machine trading program that's designed to teach you how to make safe, reliable income. Now, we shoot for 2 to 4% a month of income and growth in your portfolio. And we have courses to teach you how to do this yourself or inside a mastermind community. And the best part of that is it only takes about 20 minutes a week to implement. Now, while 2 to 4% a month doesn't sound like much, I show you exactly how we took my IRA from $111,000 to over 500,000 in just 19 months without huge risk. I'm not telling you this to brag, just to show you that you can do this too. So to learn more about this program, go to cashflowmachine.io. That's cashflowmachine.io and you can learn more. So if you're listening to this, you're either turned off or turned on by this conversation. If you're turned off, you need to maybe reframe your brain because sometimes people say things and if we're not ready to hear them, it kind of turns us off. But she's got a formula. She just gave you three steps about it. And, you know, turn it on if you're not to that level where you're ready to hear it, because there's a lot of wisdom coming from this person that you're listening to or watching right now. So let's keep it going. Um, let me just summarize real quick, because I, I love what you said. You, you started out by turning $10,000 into $6 million in real estate. So you got some creds right there, right? And then you went through some stuff right? Which we do. It's like the behind the music things on VH1. Like she hit rock bottom and then you built back up. And when you built back up, everything's better. Your house is better. You've got tools. You understand business better. You have done the work, right? You've done, you've been through the experience. So that's given you the credibility now to be able to stand there and say, let me see if I can help people. And I know that's where you get the ultimate uh, satisfaction I, as I do, because you get to help people. Then you figured out a formula and it's a simple formula, right? It's not brain surgery, but sometimes we just need to be slapped upside the head and hear the formula. So it's get clear on what you want. Step one, step two, buy assets. Step three, if you don't have the dough to buy the assets or whatever, you create your own assets. Like how simple is that? And everybody, I want to tell you, you got the ability to create your own assets. Every one of you is a genius. I always believe we're always a genius at something, every one of us. We just have to find our genius and we have to share it with the world. That's what I think, if I'm paraphrasing properly, that you're talking about. So you have a really interesting thing that we talked about a little bit before we got going here. And that is something called a money date. Tell us about what that is. Oh, yeah. So a money date, if I could give you just one tip of something to do, like an action step to take forward from this interview, it would be to start doing regular money dates, like at least once a month. So just like you have date night, you know, with your partner or your spouse, um, I recommend having a date with your money. This is like sacred space in your schedule where you actually take the time to pay attention to your money. And you can like, you know, look at your accounts and review your investments and maybe do some continuing education, like going through programs like Mark's program. Um, 
that's your program or my program, right? <laughs> yes. So that's, um, you know, so often we get caught up in the busyness of life and we're always programmed so hard to like make money, make money, make money, make money. But the truth is your money can work so much harder for you yeah. than you can work for it. So if you could just invest a little bit of time in getting that money mobilized and giving it a job, you know, yeah. your life is going to be way more awesome. And the other thing too is money loves attention. So when you pay attention to your money, you start having more of it. So, I mean, I could do a whole training on like how to set up your money dates. Um, and we talk about it at my Financial Freedom 101 event. We do a deep dive there. But if you want to just like a quick, quick, like, what do I do at my money dates? I have a money date checklist template that right. I share with my clients. And I'm happy to gift that to you for free. You can go to moneydatechecklist.com and download that. And it's like, what do you do for a second, third on your money dates? Moneydatechecklist.com, everybody. I'll have that in the show notes. Uh, on Wealth Architect Podcast when we get finished. But uh, but that's a great freebie right there. And it's not it's more than a freebie because what I think you said is put attention on your intention. Yes. That's, a, that's a paraphrase from Deepak Chopra. Put your attention on your attention and let it go, right? So he's, you're very, you, you know, you need to take care of your money. Money goes where it's welcome. And if you take care of your money, then, you know, it, it will reward you, right? It will, it will work for you. If you destroy your money, it won't work for you. Like if you don't respect it. So it's, it's not a, that you worship it. It's a, it's a more of a respect. And just to, to take the time and be intentional to think about what you're doing is it makes so much sense. So I love that concept of the money date. So in a I second, think, yeah, go ahead. I just think if you're going to build wealth and financial freedom, if that's something that you want to do, then yeah. you need to decide that money is important to you. And yeah. that doesn't mean that it's the most important thing ever. And it's like more important than your health or more important than your relationships. It's like, you can have health and relationships and money. There's like, you don't have to choose between these things. They're all important. If you can just acknowledge that money plays an important role in allowing you to save and invest for the future, buy the things you need. It's a nice medium of exchange and just say, yes, this is, it's a part of my life that deserves attention. Then it's yeah. going to be a lot easier to attract it and have it working for you. Yeah, that's, that's great. I heard, a, I heard a saying in college from somebody I went and listened to a lecture from, I don't even know who it was, some business guy. And he said, money isn't everything, but it makes things a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. You know? And so that's really the key. If you want your life to be easy, you've got to do the hard things. If you want your life to be hard, do the easy things. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of the way it goes. So in a second, we're going to come back and I want to talk to you about something that's really interesting and that's your crypto thing. But mm -hmm. right now I want to do a little self-commercial if I can, guys. So hang yeah. on just a second. I'm going to do a little self-promo. I'll be right back. Okay. We're back with Penelope and um, I want to talk to you about something. You've got a project that you've created in this whole like umbrella of what you're doing to help people achieve financial freedom, especially women. I, we haven't really talked about how women um, are empowered by what you do, but that's, that's kind of a cool thing. And um, you have a cryptocurrency. So tell us a bit about that and how that works. I do. So the reason I specifically work with women is because 86% of financial advisors are men. Most of them are over 50. And a lot of those big box financial advisor models don't take into account the differences in our lifespans and our career paths and our financial goals. And so statistically, what ends up happening is women have less money at retirement, but it has to last us longer yeah. because there's this inherent gender bias in the financial services industry, like in a lot of industries. Like, did you know that seatbelt safety testing is done on the average person, which is the average man? So more women die from uh, die and get injured from seatbelts than men do. So no kidding. It's so, so this is like, it's in heart medication. It's everywhere. There's this like inherent gender bias and women are literally dying because of this gender bias and it's in financial services as well. So that's why, even though I have plenty of clients that are men, you know, non-binary don't identify a gender. I, my marketing message is targeted to women because I feel like they're just massively underserved. So why did I create a cryptocurrency for them? Another industry that is massively dominated by men. Oh my God. In fact, I, um, a few months ago, I was flown out to Salt Lake City, Utah, to be the first woman ever that revealed films interviewed about cryptocurrency, you know, alongside all these big financial guru guys like Robert Kiyosaki. And here I am with like my, my flowing hair. And I was actually pregnant at the time. And, you know, they, they interviewed me about cryptocurrency. And I was like the only woman or the first woman in this lineup because it is so male dominated. Sure. And I think that that makes it intimidating for a lot of women. And I'm like, 
ladies, don't let the men amass all the wealth again. Like, come on, we, we got to have it. We got to do this too. Yeah. And I decided to create my own cryptocurrency to support that mission of financial freedom for women entrepreneurs. And so how, so my cryptocurrency is called Prosperity Coin. I've gone through the expense and learning curve of creating it. But what's neat about crypto is now it belongs to everybody. So if you're listening to this interview, you can go get prosperity coins for free and use them and play with them and you can benefit from it just like everybody. Oh, wait, why I, would I want to get a prosperity coin if I'm a woman? Yeah. So I mean, you could do it if you're a man too, but what, so how prosperity coin works is it works kind of like uh, an arcade. So if you think about going to Chuck E. Cheese, which I know you like, Mark, um, I, <laughs> when favorite. I was a kid, I loved going to Chuck E. Cheese, playing skee ball. That was my favorite. And uh, you get tickets for playing the different games, and then you can go to the reward center and redeem your tickets for prizes. My favorite was usually bouncy balls. So Prosperity Coin works exactly the same way. You can play games like commenting on my YouTube channel. If you search Penelope Jane Smith on YouTube, comment on any of my videos with your Prosperity Coin username, you can get Prosperity Coins for that. So those are like the games you can play, and all the games are things that support women entrepreneurs. Okay? Then you can take your tickets and go to the reward center. The things in the reward center are also things that support women entrepreneurs. Mm. And then the the difference, like you can do a philanthropy gift where you make a micro loan to another woman entrepreneur in Africa, Asia, or South America. You can do a philanthropy gift to provide a scholarship to my Financial Freedom 101 event to another woman. You can get, um, you know, books, courses, coaching, all kinds of stuff. And then the difference is where we really start co-creating it is imagine that you and I are hanging out in the arcade, Mark, and you're like, well, I don't really want any of the prizes at the reward center, but um, hey, would you be willing to give me, you know, a massage as a prize or some coffee as a prize? Or maybe somebody is like, hey, I have t-shirts that I'll give as a prize. So anyone in the community can contribute a prize that people can redeem their prosperity coins for. So it's a really like fun, creative way, especially if you're a woman entrepreneur, sure. it's a fun, creative way to market and get visibility for your business. Cause people have these coins and they're like, well, what do I do with them? Ooh, what could I buy? I could buy this person's coaching or I could buy this person's t-shirts or I could buy this person's beautiful art. And now those businesses and those offerings are now getting in front of everybody so even if somebody doesn't necessarily have prosperity coins, they're like, well, let me just buy that with dollars because I liked that shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like when you go to a business networking event and you put a gift into the raffle to boost visibility for your business, one person wins it, but everybody at the event sees it and maybe some of them decide they just want to buy it. Right. You know? Or even the person that wins might decide they want more. Wow. So, yeah. That's cool. Good for you. You, you jumped in, created a cryptocurrency. Is it a cryptocurrency or a blockchain? A, what do you what do you call it? Cryptocurrency. So there's um, and if you want to if you want to start your account with 25 free prosperity coins, you can go to realprosperity.com slash crypto, get on the priority notification list. That does not add you to my business email list. It just gives you the link to get your coins and then it'll send you something if something interesting is happening with prosperity coins. So doesn't is there like a is there a blockchain for it and all that stuff like you can see all the transactions if you want to create yes if you want to create cool. your own cryptocurrency there's three ways uh one is you can create your own brand new blockchain so the blockchain is the technology that that makes the cryptocurrency right that's i'm not going to go i'm not going to go deep into what a blockchain is unless you want me to um but that's you can see on my youtube channel i talk about like how blockchains work if that's something yeah. you're interested in so uh, you can code your own blockchain that requires some pretty substantial coding skills yep. it also puts you in some interesting relationship with the sec yep because <laughs> that's is that a security are you gonna have issues there right Absolutely. so that's that's one way the other is to fork the second way is to fork an existing blockchain like what litecoin did with bitcoin where you basically like copy and paste the code from an existing blockchain and then like change it up a little bit right that's, that requires coding skills as well also potential liability and then the third way is what i did because easier it doesn't have the same level of liability is to um, create a token on top of an existing blockchain so they're like algorand will let you do this ethereum will let you do this it's basically like um you create a token on ethereum there's something called the erc20 standard that's right uh, if you've ever heard of shiba inu coin it is actually an erc20 token on top of the ethereum network so prosperity coin is also just like that it's a token on top of the um Ethereum blockchain. Yeah. And so now it's still like both tokens on top of a chain and currencies that are part of their own chain. Both of them are called cryptocurrencies, even though 
it might not have its own blockchain. Yeah. But a token, now that's something that gives you access to a community or access to prizes. Um, if it's something that's giving you access like that, and it's not something that you're trying to use as an investment, right. now you don't have the whole like SEC, SEC issue. So CFPC. I'm like, let's just... Let's just bypass that whole thing. Nobody <laughs> has to buy prosperity coins. It's not an investment. It's a really fun way to dip your toe in the crypto world for fun and for free. Where you know what does it do? It gets, it's a way to market your business and build yeah. community. And that's how we've set it up. And that's good why. for you. Very innovative. I, I just I love the I love the angle and I love how you uh, how you took charge and did it. That's really cool. And I think it's got some really cool legs for your community. It's just, I love it. Did the, uh, one more wonky question and then we'll get back to the other stuff, but did the merge for Ethereum affect you at all in that, in that? Well, like I said, Prosperity Coin is just a token. We're, right. we're creating our own thing with yeah. it. So it like what's happening with, as long as the Ethereum blockchain works. That's what I mean. Yeah. Then it's fine. Okay. And so, yeah, Prosperity Coin is fine. That's, that's not affected. As, as long as the entire network doesn't go down, we're cool. Got it. And you mentioned, are you a financial advisor? I am not a financial advisor, okay. uh, partially because I believe there's kind of an inherent uh, conflict of interest in a lot of we the way agree. that's structured. Yeah, because it's like, I mean, even financial advisors that I just adore. I mean, there was one I was working with that I met through the Dave Ramsey program. Yeah. And she had a cat in her office. We'd been to a lot of the same personal development trainings. And like, this woman's awesome. But like, they're just... Um, you know, like my aunt went in and said, hey, I'd like to buy an annuity. And she's like, sure, here's an annuity. Because it's like four times as much commission. And yeah. I wish she had like been like, well, you know, why do you want this? Is it the best thing? Da, 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 you know, rather than just yeah. like, oh, great. So I think that. By the um, way, everybody, what she's saying is you get 8% fat on the front end of a, an annuity transaction, just so you know. And that's your money that you're paying to the salesperson. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just, it's just, and a lot of, and a lot of financial advisors, I'm putting this in air quotes if you're watching this on video, yeah. um, is a lot of them are actually just work for life insurance companies. Yeah. So they're not licensed to sell a lot of stuff and they're not like, they're not really trained on how to advise you either. So they're just like selling life insurance. So many people are selling like whole life life insurance as an investment because that's all they're licensed to sell. And the commissions yep. are insane, you know, yep. and it, it's very, very painful. So I would, if I had to give myself a title, I would call myself a financial freedom mentor or a financial freedom coach. Good. Um, you know, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I have a lot of experience. I have a lot of training. I've invested over $500,000 in my own education. So I, I bring a lot of diverse experience to what I do. So it's kind of hard to just put a label on it because yeah. I, I've become one of the top people in the world at what I do, you know? Yeah. Well, um, for good reason, for good reason. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I came from the Wall Street background and I was a stockbroker and had my own firm and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And what I learned after being on the inside of it, and I'll tell you this, if you've listened to my podcast, you've heard this before, but Wall Street is run by two kinds of people, lawyers and salespeople. Mm -hmm. The salespeople yeah. gather the assets, right? And the lawyers prevent the loss, the, the firm from getting sued. How do they do that? They tell the salespeople to get everybody an average returning assets. So if you get your 8%, you won't sue them because the lawyer will just go, well, you got 8%. That's whatever, that's what the, that's what the historical average is. Yeah. But I, you know, I don't shoot for average. I shoot for excellence and, you know, I don't always hit it, but at least I'm shooting for it. Right. And so that's the difference. And those salespeople are not trained in portfolio management. They're, They're trained not. in sales. Oh, I yeah. I, <laughs> I know. I went through this. Very too, yeah. yeah. And God bless them. I believe in salespeople. I believe in lawyers. Got a couple in my family. And I believe that people should make money doing what they're doing. But it's not financial advising if you don't have a background in financial advice. And so it's nice to kind of step back and say, hey, I'm a financial coach. I'm going to help you do what you've got to do. You listen to my program. You know that I say never give up your power and your health your wealth or your time. And that's so true. Take control, have a money date with yourself, right? Take control of your wealth. Come on, man. Don't, don't just give it up to somebody that's, you know, trained in sales or whatever. And God bless them. Get an opinion from them. And maybe they, they know what they're talking about. I have no problem with the concept of a financial advisor, No, but there's a difference between delegating and abdicating responsibility. That's right. And so when I'm working with clients, some of them decide to just manage their own investments and that's fine. They feel confident doing that. Some of them want to work with a financial advisor. That's fine. 
but I show them like how to tell if their financial advisor is doing a good job and how to have intelligent conversations with them so they are delegating and not just like here abdicating responsibility like send, sending their child off to be raised by someone they don't know till they're 18 versus yeah, like right. their own child, right yeah in fact i left when i i, I was with a, a brokerage firm before i started my firm and the reason i left one of the big reasons is they wouldn't let me do the program that i still do today that i've been doing since i was a teenager and that's making safe reliable income from the stock market and I'm like, this is not, this is less risky than what you guys do. And they wouldn't let me do it. They wouldn't let me take care of my clients. So I was handcuffed and I'm like, yeah, but I know like there, I know there's a better way. You haven't trained anybody in that. You think yeah. it's bad, but it isn't bad. So um, God bless you. And, and, and that's just great that you uh, are, you know, stretching the boundaries of, of helping people. And that's what we need. Like we just, we're, if we all just stay in the same box because of regulation, because of education, because of, of, of the mainstream, uh, views that we have, we never really learn anything. We never stretch. You only stretch at the edges. So I love, I love that you're doing that. Listen, I'm sure we could talk for another couple hours. Um, I love your energy. You have a really great message. Um, let us know one, one more time, the best places to, to get a hold of you and get a little bit more of Penelope and then uh, we'll let you go. Yeah. If you like, if you like my vibe and my energy, I have a lot of great financial education content on my YouTube channel. You could just search Penelope Jane Smith on YouTube. And, um, you know, we didn't get financial education in school or at home growing up, most of us. So yeah. I created a financial freedom 101 three day online event where, you know, when you carve out just three days, like think about how much time you've spent on your formal education, your professional education, give me three days, and I'll guide you through setting up the money skills, tools and systems you need to be financially free forever. So if you want to check that out and do a deep dive with me, um, that is 497 on my website. I'll give you a magic link for wealth architect audience. And that is gift from Penelope.com. If you go, go to gift from Penelope.com, you can come on full scholarship. You just put down a seat deposit, which you get back. So, uh, because I don't want people being like, Oh yeah, I'll come and then flake out. Cause we're actually going to send you a workbook and everything in the mail. Okay. That's why be the deposit. Do you do it live or is it a recorded live? It is live on Zoom, so it looks exactly like this. I, I lead it from um, the Benicia house, which is where I am right now. I don't get one of those stages with all the Zoom screens because um, I have a baby and I also have plantar fasciitis. So I like, to, I like to sit. I like to be able to be with my baby on the breaks. Um, but it's not just a long webinar either. We have, you know, um, breakouts and exercises. We play cool. the Robert Kiyosaki game, Cashflow 101, but in a really cool creative way with a second webcam and in teams. So it's very um, fun and interactive and surprisingly energizing considering that people are on their computer for three days. Lots yeah. of breaks and it's good. Especially so if you want to get said, started in financial freedom, you know. Like I said, if people want to just come to my website and buy a ticket, it's 497, but with the link I gave, it's full scholarship. Well, cool. Listen, um, thank you so much, uh, Penelope, for being on today. Uh, you are a, a, a delight, a lot of fun, and, um, and I know your, your message is helping the world. So thanks for your time and your wisdom. And by the way, audience, thank you for being here, whether you're listening, whether you're watching. Remember what I always say, never give up your power in your health, your wealth, or your time. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time on the Wealth Architect Podcast. Bye. You've been listening to the Wealth Architect Podcast with Mark Yegi. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Share and tell your friends. See you soon.